Let's talk about the Yamaha R in 2000A. This, I almost said speaker. It's just force of habit. This integrated amplifier was loaned to me directly by the manufacturer. I was not paid to review this product and I'm not getting to keep it. So I just asked if I could review it because I thought it looked really cool and I wanted to see how well the features worked out. I wanted to see if it was enough power for different speakers. And I wanted to talk about it to you all in case you were interested. It retails for about $4,000, so it was not inexpensive. Does it warrant the retail price? Well, I could say yes, and I could say no, right? I'm just being honest with you. Spending that much money on a piece of amplification, integrated amplifier, for me, is, is a hard thing to do. I'm just being honest. But it looks fantastic. It has a slew of input features, and it delivers a boatload of power, makes my speakers sound great, and even in ABX blind testing against a cheaper alternative, literally one-tenth the price or maybe even less, this did sound a little bit better. And I'm going to talk about that shortly. The Yamaha RN2000A is a two-channel integrated amplifier that has all sorts of input capabilities. And it also has these really cool VU meters on the front, which I just think look gorgeous. I personally requested the black one. Some people might like the silver version, but I think the black just looks sleek. As you can see on the side, it has a gloss finish. And on the front, it has a flat satin finish. You can use streaming off of your PC. You can stream Bluetooth from your phone. You can do Wi-Fi streaming. And it also has AirPlay 2, along with Tidal, Spotify, Cobuzz, and Amazon Music support via MusicCast. There is HDMI ARC input, two optical and one coaxial input, three RCA line level inputs, and a dedicated phono input for your turntable. There's also a USB type B input, which supports high res playback, as well as an ethernet port for wired network connection. This amplifier is rated at 90 watts into eight ohm, both channels driven, and 145 watts into four ohm with both channels driven. This uses an ESS DAC, and it also has pure direct mode, which allows you to bypass all the DSP inside. When I played around with pure direct mode versus not, I never noticed a difference. And I listened to a lot of different speakers. I listened to the MoFi Source Point Triple Eights. I listened to the Revival Atalante 5, the Infinity Primus 360, as well as the SVS Evolution Pinnacle Big Bad Boys that I reviewed about three weeks ago. I hope you saw that one. One of the features that I like about this, and you probably didn't see this coming because I didn't see this coming, but I do like Yamaha's inclusion of the loudness feature. Now, typically the loudness feature is built in, tied in with the volume. So as you raise the volume, it'll control the contour of the frequency response. And that contour will uh, kind of match the Fletcher Munson or the equal loudness curve to some degree. But the problem is that when you do that, it's not taking into account the sensitivity of your speakers. And it's not taking into account how far away you are from the speakers. So for example, if you have a built-in loudness contour into the volume pot, if you have speakers that are 10 dB less sensitive than others, then that loudness contour may be completely off for you. It may not do what it's supposed to do. But on the front, they had this knob for loudness. So what you do is you set the volume to an approximate area that you like, and then you control the loudness contour individually via that. So you can set that loudness contour to flat, which loudness off, or to negative 30. And basically what the loudness contour does, at least the best way that I can explain it, is it kind of takes out the mid. Or conversely, you could say it boosts the lows and the highs. But if you look at the data, what really happens is the mid gets taken out. Before I go any further, let me give you a quick graphical example of the contour plot with the Yamaha. In blue, we have contour turned completely off. The loudness contour turned completely off, okay? And then green, I turned it a little bit down and then I turn a little bit down more and more and more. So this purple right here is the max. And what you can see it's happening is it's starting with the mid range, kind of taking a little bit of that mid range out. And then as you go to the lowest volume, it's taking out namely that one to two K area. That's where our ears are most sensitive. And I'm sure that's why Yamaha designed it to do this, but I find it interesting that what is not happening is it's not consistently dragging that one to two kilohertz region down. It starts off by taking some of the mid range out a little bit more of the mid-range out, a little bit less, but more of the upper mid-range out at full loudness compensation. So if you put it at negative 30, 
there's a whole lot of mid-range information that gets taken out and you're left with more bass and more highs. That's kind of typical of the loudness curve. But again, the thing that I like about the way that Yamaha employs it is that it is not volume knob dependent. You can actually set it separately from the volume knob. And that, in my opinion, is the best way to go about using a loudness contour. Now let's talk about the sound. If you've watched my channel for long enough, you probably have a pretty good idea that I'm not huge into subjective buzzwords. And for the most part, I think amps sound like amplifiers. If they don't, then it's probably doing something wrong or it might be a broken design. And when I do my listening tests, I actually take the time to do A, B, X comparisons, which are truly blind comparisons, double blind comparisons. I use this via my Van Alstine ABX comparator, which you see here. And what this allows me to do is it allows me to test different sources, such as amplifiers or DACs, and also separate speakers. The way I set this up was I compared it to two different things. The first thing I compared it to was the WIM amp, which retails for about $300. It's also a streamer amplifier built into it. The reason I wanted to test this is because you're talking about a price difference of $4,000 to $3,000. And the power ratings are not quite the same, but they're similar. The WIM is rated for 60 watts at 8 ohm and 120 watts at 4 ohm versus the Yamaha 90-ish watts at 8 ohm versus 140 watts at 4 ohm. I completed a total of four rounds of ABX comparing. I want to preface this by saying that the levels were matched within about half a decibel via SPL meter using the exact same speakers. The only thing that changed was I was either running the Yamaha or the WIM. And in my comparisons, it was extremely hard, but I did reliably detect 100% of the time, seriously, there was a small difference. And the difference that I noticed was in the lower mid range. I talked to my buddies about this. I told them it sounded like it was around 200 to 300 Hertz. And in the data that I'm about to show you, I think there's a good explanation for me having heard an actual difference. But interestingly, where I didn't hear the difference was in the high end. See, the thing about the WIM is that it is a varied load dependent amplifier, which means that depending on the load that you provide it, AKA the speakers, the frequency response from the amplifier is going to change. Whereas the Yamaha does not do that. When it doesn't change, that's a good thing. When it does change, that can be problematic. And you can potentially hear differences in amplifiers because of this. Now there may be other reasons, but I chalk it all up to actually the frequency response differences. So with me having said that, let me show you an actual frequency response difference of the Infinity Primus 360 speakers on both the Yamaha and the WIM. The Yamaha is in red and you can see it's pretty much a flat line. There is a little bit of a drop off in the higher frequency, but the blue is the one that you need to pay attention to. That's the whim. And there's about a half a def decibel, decibel, decibel difference in the higher end. So when I see this, my question to myself is, why did I not notice the difference in the higher end? And so what I'm thinking is when I calibrated via SPL, it was probably high frequency biased is my only guess. And therefore the difference that I heard was actually in the lower end or the mid range area by about half a decibel. I really want to make it clear. I don't have golden ears. I don't claim to, I never have claimed to. When I was doing this testing, there were many times where I'm like, am I actually hearing a difference? But there were many times where I was like, yeah, there's definitely a difference here. But I had the ability to quickly AB, like switch right back and forth between the Yamaha and the WIM. And in doing so, the things that I was listening for were mid bass attack. Generally, it sounded like the mid bass was more punchy. It had more weight to it, if you will, than the WIM. And out of those four rounds of testing, I said 100% earlier, I think I missed one time. That's pretty good in being able to discern that there is a difference and reliably pick which one is different. Well, maybe not which one is different, but I am hearing a different source and this is the difference that I'm hearing. And that was reliably picked. And it turned out to be that the Yamaha had, it sounded more full in that 200 to 300 Hertz area. That's what I noticed the most. That's the best explanation that I can give you is in this comparison and saying that maybe my SPL meter was calibrated more for the higher frequency area. But overall they were within, like I said, maybe half a decibel. So I heard the difference, 
Maybe if somebody set up a better test, I would fail it. I don't know, but I did hear a difference reliably. However, when I compared the Yamaha to my March Audio P501 monoblocks, which retail for about $1,500 to $1,600 each, so that's two of them at the price of about $3,000 to $3,200, I did not have the same experience. I didn't notice a difference in the amplification. And that's what I expected because the March Audio is not load dependent like the WIM. So the WIM, like you see here in blue, is load dependent. The higher frequency is changing the frequency response. Whereas with the Yamaha, it's not really doing that so much. So I would expect to hear a difference between these two if somebody said you could hear a difference. And this is why I would explain what that difference was. I mentioned power earlier. Let's go ahead and get that one out of the way. As I said, at 8 ohm, the Yamaha is rated for 90 watts. And if you go and look at this blue line, which is the 8 ohm line, static load, flat 8 ohm, both channels driven at the same time, and I'm only showing the worst one, you get to just under 100 watts before you just start ramping up in distortion. At 1% distortion, you're at about maybe 120 watts or so. If you go look at the red line, which is 4 ohm, I get to about, ballparking that, I'd say maybe about a 170, maybe 180 watts which is about 30 watts higher than the rated 145 watts. Even though it's not rated for two ohm load, I threw a two ohm load on there and it got to just over 200 watts. Now with a simple and complex load, like a real speaker load, here's what I got in purple, about 120 watts for the simple load, which is closer to about eight, maybe it's like 7.7 .7 ohm total, but it's varied because it's supposed to simulate a real speaker load or the speaker impedance. And then with complex, which is a more varied load and a little bit harder to drive at around 3.4, maybe 3.5 ohms, it goes up to about, I'd say ballpark around maybe 250 watts. So this amplifier has plenty of power. Now going back to my discussion about this versus the WIM, there was 20 decibels difference in maximum output that I could attain with the Yamaha versus the WIM, where the Yamaha was 20 decibels louder measured at about 10 feet away with my SPL meter. That's pretty freaking significant. And that kind of illuminates a problem with not all, but some cheaper, more cost efficient, budget friendly, class D chip amps, where maybe they just tend to run out of steam a little bit earlier. They, they'll hit with a test tone, they'll hit their load, but maybe with varied music on a real set of speakers, they just don't quite get as loud because the difference between the rating at 60 watts or at 8 ohm is 60 watts for the WIM versus about 90 watts for the Yamaha. That's not even three decibels. Like that's that's less than three decibels. Maybe that's like one and a half decibels. If somebody wants to do my math for me, check me there. But it's certainly not 20 decibels. And at max tilt, I was easily getting 20 decibels higher with the Yamaha than versus the WIM. And that's where I start to kind of go, well, maybe these lower cost options are not as effective for somebody who is sitting far away or somebody who likes to listen at higher output levels, or maybe you have lower sensitivity speakers or some combination of all those. Now, I think something like the WIM or the Yimas and these other fuzzy amps and things like that, where they're $200, $300. I think they're adequate for small to medium sized rooms where you're not going to be rocking out. But personally speaking, I would have to have something that delivers the power that this Yamaha is delivering for daily listening because I need that output power. I just, I like louder volumes. I typically listen around 80 decibels or so. Some people only listen to around 60, some 70. Some want to ramp that up way higher. You'd be my guest, but I'm just kind of giving you an idea of where I'm coming from. I've talked about power. Now, what about the frequency response? Is it variable load? Well, as I said earlier, it's not, but here's your graphical representation of it indeed not being varied. At two, four, eight ohm, simple load and complex, you pretty much have the exact same frequency response. There is a minor deviation with the complex, but that's about one tenth of a decibel. I'd be really surprised if anybody could hear that. Bass and treble, min versus max. You can see that if you set these up, you can go about, well, maybe that's six. Was that about 13 to 22? So almost 10 decibels at your maximum end and then drop down maybe about 10 decibels at your maximum minimum end as well. YPAL, let's talk YPAL. 
I've not used Wipal until this speaker. I mean, I've played around with friends, Wipals, which sounds really weird now that I say that out loud, but whatever, I'm not editing this. Yeah, I just didn't like it, straight up. It seemed to really take the life out of the music. I ran it twice, and both times it pretty much had the same result. Now, it fixed the bass issues in the room, but it took too much of the upper mid-range and lower treble out of the music, and I just didn't enjoy that. So personally, I was not a fan of what Wipow did with this particular setup. As I said earlier, I listened to this amplifier with all sorts of different speakers, and I never had a want for more power. I drove every single one of those speakers to output levels that were ridiculous. So you combine that with the gorgeous aesthetic. This thing is probably one of the best looking integrateds that I've ever seen. As you know, I'm a big fan of the Macintosh Blue Meters. Personally, I'd rather have the Yamaha because it looks more elegant. It doesn't stand out like a sore thumb, like the Macintosh might. You know, like if you have friends over and they're not audiophile nuts, then they're going to look at something like the Macintosh and probably be like, yo, what the heck is that thing? But with the Yamaha, it doesn't stand out, but it looks good in a standout way. If that makes any sense. So to wrap it up, it is expensive, at least to me, but it looks fantastic. It has plenty of power. It does actually sound different and better than something that's $300. So take that for what it's worth, at least in my opinion. It has plenty of inputs. And I think that if you're on the fence about buying this and you were really considering getting it, you won't be disappointed in the purchase. With that said, I will talk to you all later. Take care.